let's start. Uh, last lecture, we were talking about image filtering and we, we covered several concepts which are important to understand this, uh, this uh, fundamental operation in, in computer vision. Today, we are going to continue that and we'll talk about image derivatives. Now, derivative, this is again coming from your high school maths. So if you if you remember like the definition, derivative just gives you a rate of change. All right. And again, it can have various different meanings depending upon the context. Uh, a simple uh, interpretation could be if you have a function, if you have a function, then if you compute a derivative uh, on that function, it might give you like at any point in that uh, in that function uh, the slope of that function, right? And if you look at like your day to day life, uh, if, if you're, let's say, driving a car, then again, if you try to compute the uh, derivative with respect to distance, with respect to time, you will get speed. Again, if you try to compute derivative of speed with respect to time, you will get acceleration. So that's the real world interpretation. The, the simple formula to compute a derivative uh, is shown over here. So let's say you have a function f. And it's defined over a domain uh, x, which is uh, which is the like the values which uh, this function will uh, will receive. So, if you take a very small incremental step in this axis, in the x-axis, right, then you you assume that that step is very small, and then you observe how much the function response is changing. All right, so that's what uh, is being shown. Uh, the numerator of this function. So fx will give you the value of this function at x, any, so x could be anything. And then you change this value of x with a very small amount, which is like you can say the limit goes to zero. And again, you try to observe the response of this function. And then you uh, take, a, uh, take a difference between these two, which says that how much the function is changing over this very small interval. And then you try to normalize that using this interval. So this will give you like how fast your function is changing, okay? And as I said earlier, this is also like you can say, what's the slope of this function at this point? So this is represented as uh, f, uh, this single dash over here. And you also use like a, a subscript x to represent a single derivative, okay? Now let's quickly go through a, a few very simple examples. Like uh, uh, you, you might have a function something like this, x squared or x times four, you add these two values. And again, this is high school maths, just a recap, all of you should know this. And you can compute derivative of a function with respect to x, which is represented as dy over dx. And uh, we, we have the formulas, again, we are not going to go over those formulas. Uh, this will give you like two times x and four times x cubed, okay? Similarly, you can compute like derivative of other functions. In this case, uh, it's not just like a uh, function of x. You can have like a sine function on top of that, or you can have a cos function on top of that. And again, these are coming from like uh, the formulas which you might have learned in high school. So a derivative of sine function gives you a cos function. And if you compute derivative of an exponential function, it gives back you exponential with the sign which you are using like in the exponent. Okay. Now, this derivative has like a, it has a continuous meaning. So you can compute derivative only if a function is continuous. But there is a discrete form to it. And this is like the exact same form which we discussed in the last, last slide. So in this case, the idea is this x can have like a discrete value. All right. So it doesn't have to like, the limit doesn't have to go to zero. So what we do is we say that that small step is actually one. This is the smallest discrete step you can take along the x-axis. And then if you replace uh, this delta x or that small step with this uh, value 1, the numerator will be just like fx minus fx minus 1, like, which means that uh, that's the smallest step you can take in this direction. And in when you take that small step, how much the function value is changing. So that will be the discrete form of uh, derivative. Okay. So you can ignore the, de uh, the denominator here because it's just one. So it just becomes difference of uh, the function value as you move forward. So essentially like it's just like the, the, the amount of change you are observing in that function, you can represent that as derivative of the function. Okay. 
at that particular step. Okay, so there are different form of uh, forms of this uh, a discrete derivative, and again, so these are just definitions. Somewhere you might find like the definitions are different for like backward and forward, but uh, it it actually doesn't matter. Uh, we'll see later when you when we use this for filtering, then it doesn't matter whether we are using backward difference or forward difference. The result is not going to change, but this is just for understanding. So backward difference is when standing at any time step, you compute the difference with the previous step. All right. So x is the value like where we are standing right now in that function. And we subtract that value with the previous step. So we subtract, we go one down uh, towards the left, right? If it's like the x-axis. So that you can say backward difference because you are subtracting at the previous value. You can also compute like the difference with the next step. So in this case, it's x plus one. This is called forward difference because you're subtracting like the next value, all right? So if you think about like x is kind of a parameter here, right? So it doesn't matter like whether you do fx negative of fx minus one or fx minus fx plus one because I mean essentially you can get same values depending upon at which step you are computing this derivative and this is another interesting case which is called central difference in this case what we do is we actually uh, if we are standing at a location we don't use the value of that location we just look the value of the next uh, location and the previous location so in this case, we'll take the value at the next location, which is at x plus one, and subtract this with the value at the previous location. So this is called central difference. Okay, so these are just basic definitions. Uh, as I said earlier, somewhere you might see that uh, this is called backward difference and this is called forward forward difference. So do, don't worry about that. It, it's okay. Now let's try to compute uh, these finite differences uh, in, in some uh, concrete example. In this case, fx is a function. It's a one-dimensional function. And these are like different values at uh, different uh, steps. Right? So it's going from 10, then 15, 10. So the value is changing. And you can consider that uh, as we are moving from left to right, we are actually moving in the x dimension. Okay. So if we compute finite difference, then what will happen is uh, let's say we compute the backward difference. So at this location, uh, we don't have any value on the uh, left, so we can just ignore it. So we start from this location, you subtract the previous value, that will give you five. Again, you will compute backward difference at this location. So you uh, subtract this, that, that will give you negative five. Again, you do for this location, 10 minus 10 will give you zero, and you can keep doing that. So this second row over here is actually the first derivative of this function fx. And we computed that just using the finite difference, right? Similarly, you can again repeat that process on the first derivative. So in this case, you can see like this will give you five, this will give you 10, and you can keep doing that again, just repeat that computing the finite difference. And this is again derivative of the first derivative and we call that the second derivative. So if you look from like the from the perspective of the original function, this is second derivative, and we can keep doing that, get like third and fourth uh, derivatives. Now, let's see if we can do like slightly better than this. And instead of like subtracting these values, can we create derivative mask? And the idea is, since we are going towards filtering, we will need like some kind of filters. The idea here is, can we create filters which can compute these uh, derivatives for us? So we'll call those derivative mask. And you can think about like, it's it's pretty simple. For all those three terms, which we uh, studied like in the last slide, backward difference, forward difference, and central difference, we can actually represent those differences uh, using these mask. All right, so this is for central, that's forward, and that's the backward. Now let's see how uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the case. So let's say if you have this derivative mask, and you put this mask on these two values. That's how you perform filtering. We studied that in the last lecture, right? So what you will do, you will perform element, element wise multiplication, and then you will just add those values. So it will give you like the negative sign to the first value. It will become negative 10, and it will remain 15 because it's just identity uh, value one. And then you can just add those two. That's going to give you five. 
So essentially what it's trying to say is, if you use this as a filter and perform filtering using this uh, mask on this function, then that's going to give you the first derivative of this function. So this will be the first location uh, where you will place this filter. And then you will keep sliding towards the right. This will be the second location. And you will keep doing that. And essentially, the output is going to be the first derivative. And the result, you can you can quickly analyze that when it's going to be no different than when you were just trying to take difference of these subsequent values. Because that's what this backward difference is doing, this mask is doing. All right. Now, that was one-dimensional function, and we can easily extend this to uh, two-dimensional or three-dimensional uh, functions. All right. So first, let's try to understand like uh, what a uh, derivative will look like for two-dimensional functions. It's a little complicated, but not very uh, difficult to understand. So if it's a two-dimensional function, then your domain will have two different x's, x and y. All right. So the first uh, the one-dimensional derivative was simple. You compute derivative, and again, you will get a function. In this case, it's slightly uh, different because you have two different x's. And we represent a derivative in two-dimensional in form of gradient vector. All right? And it's represented as like this inverted delta over here. This is symbol for gradient. So if you have to compute a gradient of a function which operates on two different dimensions, x and y, first of all, that will give you a vector. Okay, It's not going to be a single function. And that vector will have two different values. So this uh, top on the top, that's the first value. And on the bottom, that's the second value. I will explain like what these two values are. But let's try to understand like it's a vector with two different values. The first one is corresponding to one of the x's. The second is corresponding to the second x's. And in short, we also represent that as f subscript, uh, subscript x and f subscript y. Right? So this is kind of, if you, if you think about this at a high level, the first value is trying to compute the derivative in just x-axis, keeping the y-axis as a constant. And similarly, the second item over here, we are trying to compute the derivative in the second axis, again, keeping the first axis as constant. And that's exactly what we do. And this is called partial derivative. What we will do is, uh, and it's uh, defined using this symbol, uh, the symbol uh, DEBA over here. So again, we just compute derivative of that function with respect to x. And we assume that the second x is y, it's constant. So that will give you derivative in x direction. And the second item is, again, you can compute the derivative. Again, with respect to y, you will consider x as constant. So these steps are simply like the way you compute derivative in your one-dimensional function. You will do exactly the same. And if you do it in two different dimensions, it's going to give you two different values. You will put those two values in, in a vector form, and that's going to give you the gradient vector. OK, so that's uh, one aspect of derivative in two-dimensional. The second is the gradient magnitude, which kind of indicates how big the gradient is. All right. So the idea here is, again, you uh, use these bars to represent it. Again, this is your uh, gradient vector. And the idea is you're just computing the, the size of your vector. That's the standard formula we have seen. It's like a kind of, you can say, L2 norm. You square the fir first value. You square the second value. You just add those and compute the square root. So that is called the gradient magnitude. And there's one more term which is uh, associated with derivatives in two-dimensional, which is called gradient direction. Because now you have two different dimensions, and you are independently computing derivative in each of those two directions, which is fine. But then it's interesting to also see like which of these directions is more, more prominent. So which way the derivative is actually going. So at an intuitive level, if you think about if your derivative is, if your function is not changing in one of these directions, let's say y, it's almost zero. Then if the function is only changing in x direction, then the gradient direction will be in that direction, right? The x-axis. So the gradient direction gives you the sense of where the function is actually changing, where it's going. All right, so now using uh, uh, that definition of uh, derivative in two-dimensional, we can actually compute a derivative for images. And earlier, I showed you the mask which we came up for just a one-dimensional function. Here we have mask for two-dimensional function. And you can see that it's just like an extension of what we saw earlier. So earlier, the central mask was, uh, central difference mask was negative 1, 0, and 1. In this case, we just extend it to like 
three rows so that we can use it to like operate in the images, right? So this is kind of a derivative mask which can be used to compute edges in X direction. And you can see that uh, the values are changing as, you as we are moving from left to right. So it's going from negative one, zero and one. So this is going to give you edges in X axis. And again, if you look at the filter of uh, Y direction, it's actually changing in Y direction. It's going from negative one to one, all right? So these are the masks which you can use to compute uh, derivatives in two different directions. So this is kind of a two dimensional uh, derivative, discrete derivative. So let's quickly run through this uh, uh, using this simple example. So in this case, uh, the input is a two dimensional function and we can consider this as a image patch. All right, so all these are pixel values. Now, this is the first position where we can put this kernel. So we are computing the derivative at this location. So let's first compute like derivative in X direction. And uh, what you can do is just do element wise multiplication and add those values. If you will do that, uh, so all these values will be zero because the central column is uh, all zero. And all these will become negative 10. If you add those up, it's going to give you negative 30. All right, so let's uh, try to uh, collect those values. And this uh, third column over here, it will be multiplied with all one. And if you sum those up, it's going to give you 60. And if you just add up all the values, 60, negative 30 is going to be 30. And you have a normalizing factor here. So that gives you 10, which means that at this location, the derivative in X direction is 10, all right? Which means the, the values are actually changing when you're moving from left to right. Similarly, you can compute the values like at all the other locations, the borders are all zero because we don't have like our values on the left. So Right now you can just ignore those, all right? So one thing you can see at this location, the value of derivative is actually zero, right? So if you think about what this derivative mask is doing, it's trying to, trying to find out if you move from left to right or in the x-axis in this in, uh, input uh, patch, then whether the values are changing or not. So that's what your derivative tells you, right? How much it's changing. And if you look at this particular section of the patch, all these values are 20. So the value is actually not changing if you move from left to right. So that's why we have a zero here, all right? At all the other locations, for example, these six locations here, and you can see like the value is actually changing. You are going from like you were 10 and then it become 20, right? So the values are changing. Okay, so now let's go to the uh, derivative in y direction. Uh, all you will have to do is use the second uh, mask over here, which is again, checking like uh, whether the values are changing in the y direction or not. And this is the output. And if you look carefully at this patch, the values are not changing at all when you move like in the y direction. So all the columns, this is consistently 10. This is also 10. And all the last three columns are consistently 20. So if you move in the y direction, values were not changing. Therefore, you got like all zero, right? Now, those were like a standard mask to compute uh, image derivatives. And if you run those masks over like standard, let's say grayscale images like this, uh, these will be the output. And this is kind of giving you the magnitude at each location after computing derivatives, both in x and y direction. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of giving a sense of uh, what kind of edges are present in your input image. Okay, so this is like the horizontal derivative, this is the vertical derivative, and this is like a Laplacian operator. So don't worry about this now, we are going to uh, go through this later on. This is kind of uh, utilizing second order derivative, and you can see that it's actually much better than this. Uh, these two results, which is using the single order derivative. But you can see like the simple mask, which uh, we just saw, like it was just like uh, values negative one, zero and one, right? Just using that mask, how you can easily compute edges in your uh, input image. So that part is uh, very, very exciting, okay?